Okay, guys, I want to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind basically ever since Godzilla 2014. Uh, what's going on with the fan base? Now, I think the fan base, of course, don't get me wrong, is stronger than ever. Uh, ever since Godzilla 2014 came out, it pretty much revived the franchise. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I think no one could deny that uh, after 2000, uh, Godzilla Final Wars... Uh, abysmal performance at the Japanese box office. The series has pushed on a hi hiatus for a whole ten freaking years, and Godzilla 2014 is what, whether you like the movie or not, opened up the floodgates for all the Godzilla material that we have now, uh, including Shin Godzilla, uh, the Godzilla Monster Planet trilogy, which is pretty solid. Uh, Kong Skull Island, technically speaking, would not exist if not for Godzilla 2014. And, of course, that MonsterVerse is going to continue with two more movies in the next two freaking years. So that's going to be awesome. Uh, on a side note, I'm wondering... I mean, from what I understand, once Godzilla vs. King Kong comes out in 2020, Legendary will end their trilogy. And then Toho will resume making Godzilla movies. Uh, well, they're making their own monster verse. So, although to be fair, I'm not going to credit the MCU because Toho already had a monster verse way back in the Showa era, and Destroy All Monsters was more or less their Infinity War, but not as dark. Although I guess compared to some Godzilla movies around that time, kind of dark, all the shootouts and autopsy scenes. But moving on, moving on. What I wanted to talk about today was. Godzilla's runtime in movies. And I know this topic's been talked about before, but it seems to me that with Godzilla anime series and with Shin Godzilla, it's really become a really big topic to talk about. And I hate to say it, but it seems like it's definitely more of a problem among American fans than it is with Japanese ones, since Shin Godzilla was, from what I can tell, universally loved in Japan. Like I said before in the previous video, it made... A ton of freaking money in Japan. Uh, more or less well-performing Godzilla movies of all time. Uh, it won the Japanese Academy Award for Best Picture. And like I said, the movie was out for a very long time over in Japan. Like, it did exceed very well. And although, I think they are still making a sequel towards it. Oh, no, I, I forgot. I don't think they are precisely. I'm not too sure it's going to go on there. I told they're making a Monster Universe. And I'm not too sure where it's going to happen to Shin Godzilla himself, although that definitely needs some kind of continuation. It really does. But, uh, I don't know. To me, this whole issue of the runtime, to me, is very strange. Because there's a history, a history of having to wait a long time to see Godzilla in movies. Some do it better than others. Some do it a lot worse than others. You know, some of them are pretty liberal with the amount of Godzilla they throw around in the movie. Like, one of the, probably one of the best known for that are movies like Godzilla vs. Destroya and Godzilla vs. Godzilla 2. You see Godzilla pretty early in those movies. And then they may space it out in between with a lot of human interaction and other monsters. But the point is Godzilla is pretty much in big chunks of the movie. Although, once again, once you do the math on it, people have actually done graphs on this now, apparently you will see that Godzilla still usually gets less than 10 minutes or so of screen time in any Godzilla movie. Sometimes, like I said, more. Sometimes you get a lot less. But to me, it didn't seem like it was a big deal. Like, Godzilla fans, it never even came up. And I was trying to discuss people, like, when do you think this all started? And to me, it's pretty obvious. It started with Godzilla 2014, and all of a sudden, Godzilla runtime... And the amount of Godzilla in a Godzilla movie became so freaking important that now it's almost all I ever hear about when a Godzilla movie comes out. Like, the themes of the movie be damned. How much Godzilla is in it, and when is he in it? That's, that's what people want to know. Like, to me, like, what has happened here? Now, to me, don't get me wrong, there's no problem if you're a fan of Godzilla movies who only enjoys... You're just there for the monster rumble and the city is getting destroyed. That's fine. That's fine. There's no question about that. I mean, I'm not going to lie. After I've seen the movie enough times, I don't watch a whole movie every single time. I'll just, you know, watch my favorite parts, 
Or if I'm really in the mood, sure, I'll still watch the whole movie. But, you know, it's a busy world, and sometimes I just got to get to the good parts I really want to watch. I'm like, man, that's awesome. And then before I go do what I'm going to do the rest of my day. But, I don't know, it was never on my mind that, okay, God, when is the monster going to show up? Like, no, there's usually a pretty interesting plot going on that usually keeps it going. Uh, Godzilla 2014 is a very different case. That it did something that most Godzilla movies themselves in Japan don't do, and that is a cutaway. Although, once again, for the fans who don't realize this, yes, some Godzilla movies have done that. Uh, one of the better examples of that is Terror of Godzilla. The first Godzilla scene is really late into the movie, I think almost an hour. And Godzilla's fight in Titan Titanosaurus, the solo one-on-one, -on -one, only lasts 30, 45 seconds, and then Godzilla's gone a long time again. The ones got those at the very end of the movie, he's in it for a very long time. And as I said before, Terry Mechazo was one of my favorite movies, so the whole having to wait thing to me never really bothered me as long as a plot that's is interesting. Now, one of the movies that had maybe wait a long time that it kind of didn't feel that worth it was Godzilla vs. Gigan. That movie also, Godzilla does not appear for a very, very long time. Which surprised me when I watched it as a kid. I don't think I noticed that. But when I watched it again on DVD. I noticed like, oh shit. Godzilla does not appear to almost, once again, like an hour into the movie. Now once again, once he appeared, it's the Battle Royale. It's it's an interesting fight scene besides the stock footage. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of gotten... It's strange to me that this has become such a big deal. Uh, especially with something like Shin Godzilla. I mean, Godzilla's 14, you could say, maybe didn't have the same hard-hitting messages of something like a Japanese Godzilla film. Although, when people say that, I think they're being a little unfair, because not every single Japanese Godzilla movie has an idea behind it. A lot of them do, and I respect them for that, but not all of them do. And and people still seem to enjoy a lot of them, even when they they don't have that strong of a message going in, or maybe a generic one. But... Aside that, and there's ones like Shin Godzilla, once again, that's another one I've heard a lot about. You know, either A, they didn't like how Shin Godzilla looked, or B, there was a lot of boring government scenes, and that's a literal quote. I've seen it many times again and again, although those scenes kind of epitomize a lot of the movie is about. You know, it's pretty rare, if you think about it, it's pretty rare for Godzilla to literally just be about Godzilla in himself. No, Godzilla's usually a backdrop for some kind of important discussion that is taking place within the movie. And you could trace this to a lot of the Heisei films and even some of the Millennium ones. You know, uh, Return of Godzilla, of course, was just, in general, nuclear talks. The Cold War era, they really hit it home with the danger of nukes. And then by the time you get to go to Biolante, you know, it was a question of cloning and how you handle that in a bit of terrorism. Uh, because it was King Ghidorah, the legacy of Japan and the future, and, you know, corporations, the war, things of that nature. And then there's other simpler ones, like Godzilla's Mechazole 2, which is more of just nature versus machines. They always have a message to it, and Godzilla is usually just there to be the, you know, the reminder to man, you're not that great. There are, Mother Nature still gonna find ways to mess with you and Godzilla is a force of nature. So yes, yeah, so I don't know when we became when we became so obsessed with the Godzilla runtime that half the criticism I hear is about that at the time. I mean like I said, I mean, I don't know, other fans out there who literally just watch every single Godzilla movie and just kind of fast forward through everything every single time, even the first time if they could. I don't know. I don't know. Although like I said, it's not a super big deal. I'm pretty sure... I know Legendary is paying attention. I mean, that's why the next little movie they're making, Godzilla King of the Monsters, has four freaking monsters in it. Maybe, if not more, if they have, you know, a larva Mothra, or multiple larva Mothra, then one of them turns into adult Mothra. It could be dealing with, technically speaking, like five or six kaiju in one movie. So, I'm pretty sure... Uh, we know that at least Legendary is paying attention to this. You even saw that in Kong Skull Island, they went a very different route than Godzilla 2014 and had pretty much non-stop action in the movie, which I enjoyed. It was fun, 
But at the end of the day, I still like God 2014 more. It's not just because it's Godzilla, but because the spectacle felt real and, you know, not so stylized. They're very different movies, so it would be interesting to see how that interaction happens in that movie. So, yeah, uh, what do you guys think about this whole Godzilla runtime issue? Like I said, if you pick any random Godzilla movie out there, you could get a different experience out of it. A lot of them make you wait. A lot of them make you wait. Very few don't. And I'm just wondering what you guys think. Like, I mean, what do you think of the latest ones? Like, Shin Godzilla, of course, is a, diff is a big hitter. Because I was 14, the anime films, forget it. Those, there's a lot of people saying, ah, oh, God, just can't stand all this talking. I just don't understand. What do you guys want? Do you guys want just pure Godzilla? Of course I know what they're doing. They want more of a balance, which, to be fair, can be kind of expected. But, uh, I don't know. I thought the, like, the latest one, for example, if, if I'm not going to spoil it for you, if you haven't watched it yet, you should definitely go watch it before listening to more to the video. But, like I said, I thought the plot was very interesting enough to hold its own before Godzilla showed up. And it tied into the overall message of the movie, which made for a very exciting ending that maybe pumped up to see the third movie. I don't know. I think these human scenes always have a point, and they're usually very well done, in my opinion. And I never really minded. Now, for Godzilla King of the Monster, might finally go balls out? Yes. For Godzilla Planet Eater, might finally go balls out? Yes. So, we'll see how that goes. And I'm very much looking forward to all these movies. I think they're going to be fantastic. I don't see why they wouldn't. I mean, the poster alone for Godzilla Planet Eater looks pretty awesome. So uh, that's it for this issue of the Godzilla Runtime, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it. And then uh, tell me, let me you know in the comments. I'm very curious about your responses.